Um, look, we come up here to see how the um, Aboriginal Business Chamber actually works up here. So um, we've got one down in uh, Kalgoorlie started. Um, we're just starting with that and we're actually trying to see uh, how we can progress that. Um, my business is uh, from Edna. Um, it's a family business. Uh, so we've got a lot of uh, skilled uh, family members, you know, they've got operators, um, mechanics, um, catering and all that and we're incorporating that all into the one business so they do have um, on the mining that we've spoken to they do have a policy in place for that but at the moment they don't know who the Aboriginal businesses are so their actual percentage of Aboriginal businesses is right down low so we're trying to promote that to get that up to you know get a lot more people Aboriginal businesses in there so Um, in my role in the company, I do a lot of um, business development. So every time I went and spoke to a client, they were like, um, we don't really know many Aboriginal businesses, but um, coming from where uh, I came from, from a family that was uh, in business for a very long time, I thought, how do you not know that we're not here? <laughs> so maybe we're not seen, and um, that's what really inspired the reason um, for us getting a chamber. Anglo Gold, they did that. They uh, got someone who lived and breathed in the Aboriginal community and got to know us really well and uh, realised we can really support some of these people who are, are, are genuinely interested in building uh, capacity and, and business. So we supply um, mining services. Um, we started out uh, just dry hiring equipment um, and then uh, slowly now we've provided the actual services for waste management, we supply uh, water and um, dust suppression, potable water, we also supply fuel, so that's another thing that we do. I think uh, the relationships that they've built or been able to build has been really uh, interesting to see. I can see there's a very big contrast to that, um, to the gold fields. Um, like I said, uh, when I went out there promoting our business, People were really unaware of it, but I feel like here um, with Ping, they've been able to go out and they, they're aware and people are interested in talking to them. It was a need that we needed to have something because there wasn't a lot of Aboriginal people in the Chamber of Commerce. There was only one or two of us and we knew that there was businesses out there that could be brought in as part of the um, Chamber. So we set up our own Pilbara Indigenous Business Network Group and it's just grown from strength to strength. The membership is amazing, the things that we do and we're sponsored. So with the sponsorship we um, pay for the training, we pay for the business networks, the trade show that we had today um, and you know actual training on the ground so that people can understand okay what's a business plan, um, writing grants, doing zero, all of those sorts of real training around business. What's important is that we're going back to a fundamental principle as Indigenous people. We're going back to sharing knowledge, understanding, the practice. By doing this, you're creating an incredible opportunity for the next generation to come after us and those who come later. Because business, economic wealth creation and entrepreneurial activities is what will create better pathways in the welfare. This will now complement the work I'm doing with Canada, the United States. In a discussion I had with Secretary Harland, who was the first First Nations person appointed to the cabinet of the Biden administration, we talked about trade and economic opportunity between First Nations in the USA and Australia. I already have a formal agreement with Minister Mahutu from New Zealand for the very same purpose and when COVID uh, lifts and is not a major threat then it's our intentions to reach into Asia with indigenous businesses from both countries to create the economic global pathways that are available not just domestic. <laughs>